All right. Thank you, Steve. So we will get started tonight at 531 p.m. This is an ad hoc meeting for the Amherst School Board. It is Wednesday, September 6th, and we are meeting tonight to discuss uh, the nomination process for that the board undertook to nominate a new member of the board when Victoria Parisi resigned. I'm going to flip around the agenda briefly here uh, at the advice of our legal counsel that we had in our, our non-meeting here tonight. So the purpose of this meeting was to discuss the process that the board undertook when nominating Tim Thaburge to the board. We had opened it up for applications once we found out Victoria was resigning. That was at the end of June. On June 26th, we opened up a two-week application window to look for a candidate that would fill this position for the remainder remaining nine months of Victoria's term uh, and then be eligible for re-election on Election Day in 2024. So we had set, uh, we had gone through what past precedent was in this district, uh, and I intimately know this because I was one of the candidates that interviewed in 2008, December 10th, I believe it was, Shannon, 2018, excuse me. We had done interviews in non-public, the board deliberated in a non-public, and then they made a nomination for a uh, fill-in board member for the remainder of Kevin Shea's term at the time, which is about three months, three and a half months, uh, all in the same process. So we had done the same process back on July 13th after the application window closed. We discussed everything with the six candidates, and we did it all in non-public simply for the fact that, number one, it had been precedent, but number two, it was going to provide board members or board potential candidates a chance to ask the board any questions they were that they wanted to ask about what it was like to serve on a board in 2023. We all know that this district in particular has had a lot of issues over the last couple of years, uh, and we wanted the board members to feel comfortable and really to be able to, not board members, excuse me, board apl applicants to be comfortable in the questions that they wanted to ask to determine if it was something that they really wanted to do to, admit them, to submit themselves to uh, the application process and then potentially being nominated to the board. So we ended up selecting Tim that night and then we did find out from our legal counsel, fast forward to now, that the way that we did that was likely a violation of uh, right to know uh, in the RSA's 91A. It was certainly inadvertent, but we are going to uh, make an effort to correct that starting here tonight. So a couple of things that we're going to do tonight before we get to non-public. The first thing, um, and we can certainly get Kathy's advice here if the board has any questions for her, is we're going to make a motion to, to temporarily suspend policy BEDDA. This involves the rules of order and organizing a board meeting. We're doing this particularly for the items on reconsideration. If you reconsider something, you have to be able to vote on it in that meeting, it has to be on the agenda that you're going to vote on the reconsideration and discuss it at the subsequent meeting. So our goal tonight is to essentially reconsider the nomination process for Tim Thaburge. And we're gonna open this up and essentially do a uh, quasi interview session at our next meeting on September 22nd, uh, do the interviews again in public that time, do our deliberations in public, and then be able to, to nominate the board member uh, after the public has a chance to hear those interviews. So we're going to do all that on September 22nd, but under the rules of reconsideration under that policy BEDDA, we would have to do that all tonight. And obviously we can't do that because it was not on the agenda after uh, we discussed things with Cassie, Kathy Peel, our attorney. So first thing I want to do with the board is to take a motion uh, to suspend policy BEDDA, uh, particularly under the reconsideration procedures in that policy. I will make that motion. I have a motion from Jason. I get a second. I'll second that motion. Terry has a second. Any questions for the board for either myself or for Kathy? Probably more for her because I'm certainly no expert. Okay. So all in favor of suspending policy BEDDA? One, two, three, four. None opposed. So with that policy suspended, I will now consider a motion to reconsider uh, the nomination of Tim Thaburge and then to reconsider the nomination process that the board went through uh, to be able to redo this process starting on September 22nd. I will make that motion. I have a motion from Jason. I have a second from Terry. Any discussion on this? Okay, so to outline what we are going to do, if this vote passes here uh, in a second, we're going to invite all six applicants back to that meeting on September 22nd. If they'd like to come into that meeting, everybody will have some time to discuss things with the board in sort of a, a mini interview process, talk about why they wanna be on the board. We'll have a couple of questions. They can state their case. We'll do that in public on the 22nd, which is our regular meeting. 
Uh, it is the 21st, excuse me, September 21st. Thank you. I thought somebody said the 22nd earlier. That's why I'm correcting it for you. Thank you. My, uh, my apologies for believing you, Steve. So September 21st, excuse me. So on September 21st, we'll go through that process. We will then deliberate uh, and discuss the candidates uh, in that meeting as well. We'll have the applications available as part of the board notes that night. So everybody will have ample opportunity before the meeting to look at the applications of the board members if a uh, of the a candidate rather if a candidate chooses not to come that night that's totally fine we can still consider their application uh, as part of that process we will then take a vote that night to nominate a new board member uh, hopefully that nominee is in attendance and will accept that night and then we will be able to go forward uh, as we stated um, as we would normally go forward at that point with our regular business meeting that night so all in favor of that policy on this oh, sorry go ahead um, i just want to have a clarifying question Police. If someone chooses to um, remove themselves from consideration with the with the reconsideration, how would they do that? Yeah. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an email to all six applicants outlining this process for them and letting them know that their opportunity to interview in front of the board again in public will be on September 21st. There is no need to respond if they'd like to be there that night. But if they do not want to be considered, they can certainly uh, they can reply to the email in writing that they no longer wish to be considered for the board. And then we will take their application out of that process as well. And we will remove it from the packet. Kathy, should we remove it from the packet overall or leave it in there and just note that they rescinded their application? Okay. Yep. So we will uh, we will leave the application in the uh, board notes that night, but we will take them out of consideration and we'll not uh, discuss their application that night. And we are not taking any new names, yes? Correct. No, we are under our uh, advice from our council we did that everything up to the interview process was done correctly uh we were notified of it on june 26th we opened up the application process within 24 hours i believe it was that process was open for two weeks we closed it on july 11th and then we had our meeting on july 13th so everything up till july 13th was done in accordance with the rsa um, so we do not need to repeat that process there okay so so nobody knew they have the opportunity to pull their names if they choose to. We will still share. And yeah. we are happy to be been made aware because we are following fast past precedent. Yep. And so we're happy to be made aware for future that we would now follow this as a future process as well. It was certainly not done intentionally. I can vouch for that because I was part of that process in 2018. So all right. Thank you for for clarifying. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Shannon? And I think you said this, but I just want to make sure. So um, applicants can choose to come on the 21st Correct. or not, given an opportunity but if still, they, come, they can still be considered whether yep. or not they attend. The if meeting. they come that night, they can have a chance to speak in public and, and ask questions of the board or vice versa. If they do not choose to come that night or if they aren't available to come that night, we will still consider their application. Um, and they just won't have the opportunity to speak in public on that. Interviews, by the way, are not required under policy BBBC. We can choose a candidate based strictly off of applications that are submitted, but as part of this board's desire to be transparent, um, however well that worked this time, we, we wanted to conduct interviews to make sure we were as thorough as possible uh, in this process. Any further questions? Kathy, any clarifying points from you? Okay. So with that, I will call a vote to uh, on that motion today that uh, I can't remember the exact wording of, but I will call a vote on that motion. Four in favor and none opposed. So with that, any other comments from the board tonight before we open up for public comments? Yeah, I, I would just like to extend another thank you to all the candidates um, or applicants rather who who put in. It was a, a really great um, applicant pool. And I think we're really lucky in this town to have the level of engagement that we do. And I was also at that 2018 meeting. So you know, this past precedent seemed um, familiar to me as well. So like Terry stated before, as a board, I'm grateful that this was brought to our attention uh, and that we have an opportunity to rectify um, you know, the process. I, you know, I, I feel sorry that that we have to do this and I certainly wouldn't have have done it otherwise um, had we known. So thank you. And I will note that we had a couple of votes over the summertime that were all unanimous uh, with Tim as our board member at that point. So we will reaffirm those votes and retake those votes uh, during our meeting on July 21st, just to make it official that those votes are, uh, are again, um, those, those items, those motions are again voted upon accordingly. That be re is it ratifying those? 
Okay. Okay, so with that, I will open it up for a public comment. If you'd like to come to the microphone in person, uh, you'll have three minutes. Say your name and town of residence. We do have a Zoom audience tonight. Steve, I'm not logged in, so if you don't mind telling me if we have anybody on Zoom that would like to speak. Uh, the directions for public comment on Zoom are in the chat box, so please fill out, uh, please do everything that it says there. Type in your name and your uh, screen name, turn on your camera, say town and uh, name, name and town of residence, and then you'll have three minutes as well. So anybody in person would like to speak tonight? Yeah, just yeah, turn all the way on, Greg. You got to hold it down and let it turn on, and then hold the bottom button. Yeah, you can. No, you, you got to hold the mic, hold that button on the bottom until it turns green. All right, I need Tim over here. All right, name and town of residence. My name is Greg Fritz. I reside in the town of Amherst, New Hampshire. Thank you. Um, thanks for your comments for this. I just want to get a couple of things clear. So there is no fifth board member right now. There's still a vacancy. Is that the current? Correct. That's why there are okay. just four of us up here. Tonight. Got it. Okay. Let me clear that. And then um, I, I'm someone that would like to interview again in public for that um, September 21st or whatever day it was. Um, I'm not sure my thought at the moment. Would you allow for Colin um, participation for the candidates? For that interview i don't see why we can't i mean i think that we're making it up on the fly anyway so let's uh let's do that yeah we can okay we can do call I might be able to make it. i'm just not sure i am okay yep. that's all thanks so much yeah if you can do zoom greg that would be probably better quality than a cell phone but if you if whatever you have is is fine just go ahead sir all right aaron kaplan amherst new hampshire uh not much to say other than uh, thank you very much for taking the matter seriously to every member of the board. Um, it, whether a board or really anyone makes mistakes isn't a measure of what that, that that board or person's character is. It's when mistakes are discovered, how they are handled. Uh, and, and this board is handling this uh, very well. So I just want to say that there's not much more to say other than that. So thank every one of you for taking the matter seriously. Um, I do have one question. I don't know if you can answer or not, but on the 22nd, is that 21st. Uh, the 20, 21st? 21st. 21st. I think I just saved a lot of, yeah, I think you just saved a lot of people a headache. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this is, okay. So I didn't get that from nowhere. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a quick question regarding that. Is that, uh, just like any other meeting with his public input before and after, uh, I guess the meat and potatoes. When you guys actually discuss, is it open for public comment prior to you guys doing, going into the discussion? No, I think we're going to, it's a board decision. So the board will, because we're going to interview the candidates that night and then the board will deliberate that night. We'll make our decision and then we'll open it up for the rest of the meeting. If you have public comment about it after the fact, sure, but we're not going to take um, election stump speeches essentially for, for or against somebody as part of that that night. You can have public comment after the fact. If you have comments that you say, hey, I don't agree with your decision here, that's that's allowed. But we're not going to open it up for public comment on who you, you think the best candidates are. You'll have the opportunity to vote on a candidate when that position comes up for re-election in, in March. Okay. Um, then I guess I would expand just slightly more. I pretty much said what I needed to say last time. Sure. With um, you, this board has the authority to put in who to place whoever you see fit. Uh, I would just ask that you take into consideration what was discussed. I'm not advocating for any one particular candidate. Uh, I do ask that you consider what was discussed, how people are being treated in this town, and that you take that into consideration because every member of this community is due fair treatment from their representatives, whether it be national, state, local, right down the school board level. So I, I hope you take my comments previously in, into consideration. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Anybody online, Steve? No one with a hand raised, sir. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly anybody that has opinions on this process can certainly send us an email at asb at seu39.org. Um, any thoughts or comments are certainly welcome there, but um, it won't be, you know, we won't open up public comment after we do the nominations that night, after we do the interviews that night. 
Mr. Purvis. Good afternoon, school board. Uh, Wayne Purvis, Amherst, New Hampshire. Our comments specific for this subject that you just dealt with, or is it open for other? Public comment, generally we've we've allowed it to be on anything. We prefer it to be on this, but if there's something that we that, that's pressing, we can certainly have public comment. And what we can do, Dwayne, is we can take the public comment and we can come back and, and add this to another agenda item or, or give you a response outside of this because it wasn't necessarily on it, but feel free to comment what you'd like. I comment, I wasn't available at the last meeting. Sure. I think I was out of town. I was out of town. But let me uh, read what I have here. Congratulations again to our new superintendent, Mike Berry. I truly hope his tenure will be fruitful for our community and equally rewarding to you. The problems and issues that existed prior will not go away with the appointment of the new superintendent. These are still real and must be resolved. Last year, the concerns around academic outcomes, the use of resources and spending were highlighted by the prior ASD Ways and Means Committee. committee. As a long-term resident of this community, I am grateful that ASD has discussed the desire to provide realistic metrics for measuring academic outcomes. I hope you will get it done in short order. The reports generated last year, presented by the prior Ways and Means Committee, Amherst School District Ways and Means, Ways and Means Committee, were met in some cases with consternation. Some people did not appreciate learning the facts and rightfully demanded better outcomes. Some did not appreciate the facts being told at all. Sadly, there were two teachers who were leaders in the local teachers union who publicly complained via social media, saw fit under the auspices of representing the teachers union, filed right to no complaints against the Amherst School District Ways and Means. They went as far as to use teacher union funds to retain attorneys to represent them with what appeared to be, in my opinion, personal vendettas. And for what? What was accomplished? Except that we potentially will become more litigious. Folks, we live in a small town. We can talk with one another. We can do better. Even more troubling is that if anyone looked, prior ways and means committees who are who are volunteers. also violated right to no laws, but it's been overlooked. The Ways and Means Committees, uh, the Ways and Means Committees, as with all committees, are volunteers who are giving their time to do a job informing the community, community as to the benefit of the financial request made by the school board. It is not fair or appreciated that any volunteer is threatened with legal action because some do not agree with their findings. Again, we can do better and we will. I hope the focus of this board will be on the real issues confronting the school district, academic excellence, spending, not pet projects. I also hope that we can sit down and have honest conversations and not the social media sniping crap. And as I say, God bless us, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Uh, without exception, I'd like to have this. Uh, I was going to say, if you have a copy of that, you can provide that to Danae. That would be outstanding. Anybody else public comment in person? Anybody online, Steve? Nope. Okay, so with that, I will close public comment. We don't have any other agenda items to discuss here tonight, so I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I have a motion from Jason. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Sorry, we got a late hand. This is like wrestling where they get to two and then they just like bringing the arm down for three in WrestleMania and they get the shoulder off the mat. Uh, we can just, we can put it on hold. We had never got a second, so. Sorry about that. It was late, I promise. Well, I, 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 is, is it the right meeting? Who do we have, Steve? Uh, Ann Baird, and then the webinar, there we go, she's coming. And when you are ready, if you'd like to turn on your camera, uh, introduce Hi. yourself and your town of residence, and then you'll have three minutes.
Hi, all. Uh, Anne Baird Amherst. Um, can I ask a question that is not related to the interviews? Uh, yeah, and we, if we can't provide an answer as it's not on the agenda, we can certainly get back to you. Okay, great. I have um, three questions. They're kind of different topics. Um, I was told by Steve a few months ago that there was a wellness committee being formed, and I just wanted to see how this was going and what conclusions they have come to. Um, personally, I was just wanting to know how we will implement more playtime for the children into the regular school days. Um, so, and then my second question is school start times. I know surveys have been sent out, but my question is what are the realistic chances of them changing? I, I know I've talked to a couple of families in the kindergarten, elementary age, and they're facing kind of stress trying to figure out after school care and mornings can be difficult. So I just wanted to see what the thoughts were on the possibility of changing them or if this is kind of where we're at and we think this is the best fit. And my last question is thoughts on adding SRO officers to Clark Wilkins. Okay, so none of those, I, I don't know that where I can answer the second one. The second one for you, Ann, is going to be a SAU-wide decision that we'll reevaluate in the spring. Uh, for this school year, those times are, are set in stone because everything else is based off that schedule. Uh, but this is something that's voted on among all three boards of SAU 39 to fit bus schedules. So nothing will change this year for that. But I presume that we'll go through the process again in the spring of, of reanalyzing that. And certainly I invite you to email the chair, Christine Peters of the SAU 39 Collaborative Board and put this, bring this to her attention and, and make sure that she can put it on an agenda item for down the road. Uh, because just simply because our board doesn't have the authority to do that. As for number one, Terry Beam is our representative on the wellness committee. If you'd like to email us at the ASB at SAU39.org email, we'll be able to provide better answers, a better answer for number one. I can have Terry reply directly to that. And then for number three, uh, Steve, I don't know that that will be something, or Mike, I don't know if that'll be something we'll openly discuss, but you can certainly email us and I can have Mike Berry get back to you on that. Okay, great. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I did it again, Mike. I will eventually get it right that you're sitting to my right and not Steve anymore. Steve, anybody else? That's it. Okay. Now I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Jason made a motion. Can I get a second? Oh. Terry with a second. All in favor? All in favor, yes. We are adjourned tonight at 553. Thank you, Danae. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Kathy, for your advice and your time.